right, so today we're filming a quick little 15-20 minute warm-up for our athletes to do. We work with a lot of college football players and as part of that we see a lot of hamstring and hip slash groin injuries or tightening or little snags that they run during the course of the season. So we just wanted to prepare our athletes with a quick little warm-up they can do in the gym just using a foam roller, a lacrosse ball, and a rubber band before they go out to practice in the rest of their routine. We kind of think of it as a three-phase process. So one, they're going to get in there and use a foam roller, the lacrosse ball, to kind of break up the tissue a little bit, kind of shake the rust off, kind of get everything pliable, get it ready to get moved around. After that, they're going to go into a couple of stretches to kind of make sure that everything is the way we need it to be. And then finally, we're going to lock in the movement we've just kind of unlocked by letting them do a couple of active movements to kind of facilitate the type of movement and make sure everything is functioning the way we want it to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to foam roll my hamstrings. When the athlete is actually doing it, I want them to spend as much time as they need to on it. For me, I'm just going to spend a few seconds on it. So you can roll out that hamstring by applying pressure right there. If that is too intense, if that's too much weight, then you kind of shift down a little bit, not quite as much pressure on the leg. If you can take it, I want you to put more of your body weight on that hamstring that you're rolling out. You're trying to go all the way up and down, trying to really get into the deep belly of that muscle. So there's my right leg, then I would do my left leg hypothetically. After you have that done, I want you to get into that adductor. So I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna do my right side first, so I have it going the opposite way, and I'm gonna get on top of it right there. So I'm rolling back and forth on that adductor, going all the way down to my knee, all the way up to my groin right there. If I find a tight spot, I'm gonna stop on it, kind of flex that foot up and down, rolling it back and forth, and move it all the way through. And at the top, I actually like to roll over my hip bone slightly. Just kind of feel it kind of roll over and kind of massage that area. Then I would do the other side. After that, you're gonna take your lacrosse ball, and I want you to hop onto a bench, and I want you to work on your hamstrings for a minute. So what I'd like to see you do is stick that lacrosse ball underneath your hamstring, roll around, find those really deep, tight spots, and then I want you to flex up and down over that muscle. That lacrosse ball is a good bit firmer, so as you work with it, you'll be able to get a little bit deeper into some of those tighter spots in that hamstring, making sure you don't just go right here at the bottom where it attaches the knee, but you go up, from where it originates up in that hamstring. And then once again, the reason we're doing it up on a bench is so we can flex that leg up and down. One of the really important ones we're gonna work on is that piriformis. So what I wanna see you do is get that lacrosse ball there underneath your glute. And then you're going to take that same leg that the lacrosse ball is underneath, cross that ankle over onto your other knee, and then roll it around into that piriformis. And you will feel it when you get there. It is not a super comfortable thing. And on any of these, I want you to spend as much time as you need to on them. Once again, I'm trying to kind of rush through this. If I was really going through this exercise, I would spend a little bit more time on it. This is a little bit painful. I'm gonna lay down flat on top of this lacrosse ball and I'm gonna let it knead around in there, and then once again, I'm gonna flex that leg up and down. So I have that lacrosse ball right underneath my quad, and I'm rolling it around, finding the painful spots like that one. Make sure on this, you're gonna find a lot of knots down close to the knee. Make sure you go up a little bit higher, closer to the hip. There'll be some junk up there too. So we've kind of broken everything up. We've gotten some of the rust off, and now we're going to actually take it through some stretches. So the first thing I do is a little stretch using the band here. So I'm going to lean back, let it stretch out my hamstring first. And I'm gonna hold that for about 20 seconds here. I'll hold it for about five. Then I'm gonna drop it over. And then out 
over to the other side. Once again, I'm just holding these for five seconds right now, but I'd like you to hold it for 20, maybe even 30. Now we'll get into the hips a little bit more. So the first one I like is just to kneel right here, kind of slide that hip forward. I'm not trying to reach back with my low back, I'm just trying to slide my hips forward a little bit and feel that stretch in my groin and hip right here. And then from this position, I'm gonna throw my hands up and then lean over that bent knee. So I'll feel that stretch coming all the way through my hip up into my obliques. And then the other side. From there, I'll then grab my ankle, pull it into my glute, and get a nice little quad stretch right here. I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Switch back. And as I do, I'm gonna stretch out this hamstring just by sinking back a little bit. Good. Then finally, now that we've done all that, we don't want to leave the athlete with all those static stretches right before they go into the field. So now we're going to actually rehearse some proper movements. So the next thing we're going to do is a Cossack squat. I would like my athletes to do 10 reps each side. I'm just going to demonstrate three. I'll do a more difficult version that I will struggle with because it's hard. Then I'll uh, show a modified version using the bench. So on that Cossack squat, we're going to get a nice wide base. We're going to kind of squat down towards one side. And as we do, that opposite foot is going to point straight up into the air. So those toes are up on that side. This heel is going to try to stay down. So we're here. And then switching over to the other side. Toes are up, heels are down. And if that is too difficult, you can always use a bench for stability. So you can just hold on right here. So you have a little bit of support as you sink down. That is a ton easier, letting this kind of support some of my weight. After that, we'll go into a little squat to stand. So I'm just gonna bend over, hook my feet, or hook my hands underneath my feet right here. I'm gonna squat down, and then stretch out that hamstring a little bit. Once again, I'd like my athletes to do 10, I'll just do three. From there, we'll go into a few hip swings. So you just find a post anywhere, and you're just doing your standard hip swings back and forth. Nothing too hard there. Hip swings forward and back. 10, 15 each direction, not that hard. And then finally, we're gonna use the foam roller one last time for a little glute bridge action. So what I'd like to see is putting that foam roller flat on the ground. Back is flat on the floor now. And we're going to go up. And then from here, we're going to roll it out. And then bring it back in. Roll it out. And then bring it back in. Just a little bit of work for that hamstring. If that is super easy for the athlete, we would let them do it with one leg at a time. So they would go up, out, and then back up on that hamstring. Just to give it a little bit of work. Once again, eight to 10 reps would be awesome for that. And there you go, an easy 15 to 20 minute warm up to get you ready to go after practice. Thank you.